Hey, what's going on? It's Stranger. Welcome to another YouTube music production video where my mission is to help you succeed in making music. So recently I've been hearing a lot of this slower tempo jungle music made at 140 beats per minute. And a lot of it employs the old school techniques that we used to use to make jungle music. So I thought it was only relevant that today I provide you 10 techniques towards breakbeat mastery. Now some of the artists exploring this style include Tesla, Sully, Coco Bryce, and Soundboy Killer. However, it's hard to do it justice just to name a few artists. So what I've done today is I've created some collaborative playlists on Spotify. And feel free to add on to these playlists. Just make sure the music you're adding belong to the sub genre. This way we can help each other explore and educate on new music. Now comment down below and let me know what is your favorite tempo to make music in. Now the techniques that I'm going to show you today can be applied to higher tempos of jungle as well. The idea here is to program the breakbeat in a way that it is almost playing a lead melody with various change ups here and there. Now sometimes this heavy style of drum editing could be referred to as choppage and there's actually a subgenre of jungle dedicated to this style called drum funk. And by the way, I'm proud to announce I'll be hosting my very first drum and bass masterclass. But more information about this at the end of the video. And guys, if you want to see more content like this, Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons. That all helps my channel grow as well. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so I have a new project here and it's at 140 beats per minute. Now, one of the popular breaks to be used in this kind of jungle style is the hot pants break. And I have the version of the hot pants break, which is pre-cut and recycle. So I'm gonna right click and choose slice to mini track, which sends each slice to a different pad on your drum rack. And you also get the MIDI file for that groove as well. Now, one thing I like to do is to line up the kicks and snares onto the grid. So we have a more of a sharper sound. So just choose the right grid mode, which is the eighth note. And I select a snare and all the subsequent hits after the snare. So that would be these guys here. And just take that snare and move it to the line. Likewise, select these guys here and move it to the line. Notice I'm not selecting this hit because that's the kick. And we want the kick to be on, on the grid. So I'm going to select the kick here and just drag it to the line. Again, choose the snare here and move the snare to the line like that. Move this guy here. Now additionally, you could take all the eighth notes of the shakers and line those too. And one way I like to do it, just like how we did with the snares, select the group, which is the shaker and the ghost note, and align it together. So move that note onto the grid. And this allows the groove of that ghost note to still be intact. Notice that these ghost notes are all a bit off, and that's what gives it that funky human feel and you want to preserve that. So again, we could select these two guys and just move the first one. So lines. Now once they're happy with your groove, then we're going to bounce this down to audio. So we're going to right click on this track and choose freeze and then right click again and choose flatten that flattens it down as audio. Now the reason why we've bounced this sound as audio is that it makes it easier to do sample manipulation to chop up the break and, and add different effects here and there. You've seen in my previous videos where I've used MIDI to chop up my breaks and that's totally cool too. It's just two different approaches and today I'm showing you the more audio approach. I use both depending on the track I'm doing. Now I'm just going to go in and just bring up this track a little so it's louder. OK, 
Okay, so now that we have the brake bounce down as audio, there's a couple of things that we can do to manipulate the brake. The first thing I'm gonna do is to adjust the pitch so we can have a more old school sound so we can pitch it up by three semitones. <laughs> Now, I encourage you guys to explore the different algorithms that will determine how that pitched up break will sound. The texture one is a good one where you can choose the grain size. So the bigger the grain size, the more chopped up and more old school it'll sound. <laughs> And if you bring it down to a more smaller green size, it'll sound a little more flangy. So it's really up to you and how you want your break to sound. I'm gonna stick with the beats algorithm for now. Now you may notice that this third kick here sounds choppy don't worry about that it's just something with the break and we'll just remove the slice later on now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to chop up the main kicks and snares and rename each slice so it's a little more organized and easy to rearrange so you have a kick here there's a snare here and there's another kick here so it's command or control e to cut just place your cursor on that slice and control or command E. Okay, and then we name each slice. So I'll call this kick one, snare one, kick two. So now that I have it nicely cut up and renamed, I can make a copy of the original, just add a new audio track and just move it down here. And just move this guy back up here and then we can mute this channel and then, then we can pick and choose select slices to create our own rhythm. So I'm gonna take this slice here. Now you can either copy and paste or just hold control or command click and drag. So we have a kick and maybe a snare here. Then duplicate that snare. And then perhaps have a double kick. And then perhaps a uh, triple snare. Maybe on this uh, third snare, I'll take snare three here like that. Now I've just applied this high pass EQ to take out some of the bottom end of the break. And actually, I'm hearing one more slice at the end of the bar here, so like that. So now we have this. Okay, so the next trick is we can pitch up or down specific slices. So I'm going to take this slice here, and then I'll just change the color so it's more recognizable. And then... And we're going to pitch this up by one semitone. So it's already at three semitones, so we're going to move it to four. Okay, so now we have this. So by pitching individual slices, you can give the breakbeat a more musical feel. And definitely this was done in a lot of old school jungle and a lot of modern jungle and that 140 jungle is revisiting this technique. The next trick is we can time stretch individual slices. So I'm gonna take this very last snare here and I'm just gonna get rid of these little shakers at the end so it's just the snare. And then the trick is to hold shift and notice how the icon changes here. And we got this little triangular icon with the brackets. That, that means when we click and drag, it's gonna stretch the slice. So now we have a stretch snare like that. Now again, you can explore the different algorithms that are being used to stretch the snare. You may desire more time stretch, old school sound. If you go into texture, okay, and just change the grain size to your liking. I'll just leave it on beats for now. And of course, we can also pitch down this last slice, so I'm gonna make it negative seven. 
Okay, so now let's listen to our break. The next tip is we can reverse individual hits. So I can take this snare here. I just made another copy of this phrase. So we have this guy here and I'm just gonna hit reverse. And sometimes you may want to fix the end of that reversed hit. That very end might sound a bit choppy or abrupt, so you can just shave it off like that, maybe add a bit of a fade out. Okay, the next trick we can do is add stutters and fills. So you could take the snare here and duplicate it four times like that. What I like to do is then apply your utility effect and then modulate the gain to create that fade in. Now the reason why I don't modulate the main volume is that we want to be able to adjust the mix of the break without affecting the envelope here, which is why we have a dedicated utility to modulate the volume envelope. Okay, another trick is to add little pauses in between the chops to clean up and make it sound a little more mechanical. So we can add a little pause here. That makes the chop sound more defined. Okay, and then the final trick I'm gonna show you is we can resample slices with effects. So I'm gonna take this very last snare here and just move it up here for now. And then I'm gonna apply a reverb to this track here. And then I'm just gonna freeze, take the slice and then bring it back down. And now it's flattened that reverb. So we've resampled it. Now we can unfreeze that track. And then perhaps I can move the section a bit closer here so we get more of that snare. Maybe add one snare here. Maybe a double kick here. Add that chop in. So now we have this. Okay, so now we're going to take everything we've learned and then create some additional phrases. Now the idea is once you have the main two bar phrase here established, then you can make iterations of it by making subtle edits. So I've just copied that section over here to phase three. So we'll move the snare here and then perhaps use this uh, time stretch snare here. And then we'll do a double fast kick here and move this there here. Pitch the second one up a little. Little snare roll here. Of course, automate the gain. So this is what we have on phrase three. Same idea, we're going to copy the first phrase onto phrase four. And we're going to move this guy here, maybe add a double snare here. And over here, we're going to add a triplet kick. So command three for a triplet mode, duplicate these guys. And then I'm going to move this guy here. And then let's add a pitched up snare here. So now we have this. Now actually for this one, I'm gonna use the rev snare. So zoom out, here's our rev snare. Slide it in, okay, and this is what we have. Okay, so now that we have a full eight bar phrase, I now have this uh, little vocal that I found on Splice. London sound, London sound. That's a little nice touch. And then I have this 808 bass sequence here. So 
So let's hear it all together. Alright, so this is sounding like some pretty awesome 140 jungle. Now, just out of curiosity, let's pump this up to 163 beats per minute, which is another popular tempo for jungle at the moment. Let's hear how it sounds. Dun, dun, dun. Alright, so let me know down in the comments, which tempo do you guys prefer? 140 beats per minute or 163? Okay, so that was my 10 techniques for breakbeat mastery. And there's definitely more techniques that I can show you in the future. But if you can master these techniques, then you're on your way to making some real sick ass jungle. Oh, and by the way, next week, I'll be doing my first live and interactive masterclass hosted by the guys at DJ Tech Tools, where I'll be providing you six 90-minute sessions where you'll learn various techniques and subgenres of jungle and drum and bass music. If you can't make it or you've missed it when you've seen this video, don't worry. You can download the archive if you want to purchase that. Just check it out all in the link below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and share buttons. And also, if you want to make jungle or drum and bass with a few clicks of a button without fussing over technical details, you can support me by picking up the jungle production kit. I also just released the liquid drum and bass production kit. You can check that all out in the link below. So that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks again for watching. Keep practicing. I'll see you at the next video.